we can all humbly bow down, raise our kundalini and take a bandhan. We can place both of our hands in the Mother Earth and recite Sri Ganesha Adharva Shirsha. Om Namaste Ganapate Vameva Pratyaksham Tattvamasi Vameva Kevalam Kartasi Vami Vaki Valam Dartasi Vami Vaki Valam Hartasi Vami Vasarvam Kalvidam Brahmasi Vam Sakshat Arma Sinitium Vidam Vakshmi Satyam Vakshmi Avatvama Mavavatarum Avashodaram, avadataram, avadataram, avanucha namavashishyam, avapashyata tavapurastat, avodarata tavadakshinatat, avachodwata tavadaratat, sarvatomam pahi pahi samantat, Vam Vam Mayaswam Chin Mayaha Vam Mananda Mayaswam Brahma Mayaha Vam Sajita Nanda Vityosi Vam Pratyaksham Brahmasi Vam Jnana Mayo Vijnana Mayosi Sarvam Jagadidam Tvato Jayate Sarvam Jagadidam Tvatas Tishtati Sarvam Jagadidam Tvayi Layameshati Sarvam Jagadidam Tvayi Pradyeti Tvam Bhumi Rapo Nalo Nilo Nabaha Tvam Chatvari Bhakpadani Tvam Gunatraya Titaha Tvam Dehatraya Titaha Tvam Kalatraya Titaha Tvam Mula Dhara Stito Sinityam Tvam Shakti Trayat Makaha Tvam Yogino Dhyayanti Nityam Tvam Brahma Tvam Vishnu Tvam Rudra Tvam Indra Swam Agni Swam Vayu Swam Surya Swam Chandrama Swam Brahma Bhur Bhuvaswaram Ganadim Purva Mucharya Varnadim Tadanantaram Anuswaraha Parataraha Ardin Dulasitam Tare Naridham Etatava Manusvarupam 
ಅಖಾರೂಪಂ ಅಖಾರೋ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ರೂಪಂ ಅನುಸ್ವಾರ ಸಂಧ್ಯರೂಪಂ ಬಿಂದೂರುತ್ತರೂಪಂ ನಾದ ಸಂಧಾನ ಸಂಹಿತ ಸಂಧಿ ಶೈಷಾ ಗಣೇಶ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಗಣಕ ಋಷಿ ನಿಕ್ಷಿತ್ ಗಾಯತ್ರಿ ಚಂದ ಗಣಪತೇವತ ಓಂ ಗಂ ಗಣಪತಿಯೇ ನಮಃ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಿಮಹೆ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನೋ ದಂತಿ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾತ್ ಏಕದಂತ ಚತುರ್ಹಸ್ತ ಪಾಶುಮಂಕುಶಾರಿಣ ರಥಂ ಚ ವರದ ಹಸ್ತೇರ್ಬಿಭ್ರಾನ ಮೂಷಕಜ ರಕ್ತ ಲಂಬೋದರ ಶೂರ್ಪಕರ್ಣಕ ರಕ್ತವಾಸಸ ರಕ್ತಗಂಧಾನುಲಿಪ್ತಂಗ ರಕ್ತಪುಷ್ಪೇ ಸುಪೂಜಿ ಭಕ್ತಾನುಕಂಬಿನ ದೇವ ಜಗತ್ಕಾರಣ ಮಚ್ಚಿತ ಆವೇರ್ಭೂತ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿಯಾದ ಪ್ರಕೃತೇ ಪುರುಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಜ್ಞಾಯಂತಿ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯ ಸ ಯೋಗಿ ಯೋಗಿ ವರ ನಮೋ ವ್ರಾತಪತಿಯೇ ನಮೋ ಗಣಪತಿಯೇ ನಮಃ ಪ್ರಮತಪತಿಯೇ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಅಸ್ತು ಲಂಬೋದರಾಯ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಿನ್ನನಾಶಿನಿ ಶಿವಸುತ ಶ್ರೀ ವರದ ಮೂರ್ತೇ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಆದಿಶಕ್ತಿ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಶ್ರೀ ನಿರ್ಮಲಾ ದೇವ್ಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ with our attention on our sushumna channel we can sit in silent meditation for a while with our hands back on our laps
we can now listen to mother's talk. come to Kabela, it is the ten years completed. So, you can imagine how in these ten years we have been able to progress in Sahaja Yoga. Now, today we are going to have a Guru Puja. As I have said, you all are gurus and you want to worship me as your guru, is all right. But the main thing one should understand, that <coughs> you have become guru, no doubt, because you have the knowledge you have the absolute knowledge and so we can say you have become gurus, no doubt. But one has to understand that you have reached a state where you can raise the Kundalini, you can give realization to others. Also you know what is the absolute knowledge. To know the absolute knowledge is very important and to assimilate is even much more important. Though we know the absolute knowledge, we cannot assimilate it that well. That means we cannot go deep into it. What is the reason for that? We have to realize that we have all come out of the heritage that was the animal kingdom. From the animal kingdom you have evolved. So there are so many things of the animal heritage linger in us the aggressiveness, the domination, peevishness, fear, grabbing, all these are our inheritors and they are within us lingering. We want to grab things of others, not you people, of course not, but people who are not yet in Sahaja Yoga. They first used to grab lands, then they started grabbing people, making them slaves, then they were not satisfied with that, so they were grabbing kingdoms, jewelry and all these things. So just to grab, they have no legal right, still they would grab. It seems, it seems very funny, it seems very inhuman, but it is there because of our inheritance. Now there are so many other things like jealousy. Among animals there's very little of that. They don't have jealousies so much as we have. While we have inherited this jealousy by our own reactions and thinking. People get jealous and they want to put down others. If they cannot achieve any height, they want to bring down the heights of others. 
This kind of jealousy, when it grabs human beings, they think whatever is done in the name of jealousy is all right. They become very conscious that we are lower than another person, we lack in some talents than another person, and they try to overpower that person because of the force of jealousy behind it. Now the trouble is, though we are human beings, we have inherited so many animal qualities, like we are ferocious, we are angry, and we get upset, as animals do. But additional to that, human beings can react because of their thinking. They think, they can think, and by thinking all these inherited properties become perverted. Like a person wants to put down another person, then he doesn't behave like an animal, a straightforward way, but he will find out a device, a method, he'll think it over how to do it. The main problem with human beings is that they still have inherited very violent temper. This violent temper has to be controlled, has to be seen. When you see something which you don't like, which is against your will, maybe something like that, immediately you flare up. Just now I saw, instead of the camphor, they had put a sugar candy. To sugar candy, they were putting the matchbox, they were using match into it, matchstick. It would not take the fire. They tried and tried, it would not. So I said, let me see what is that. So that was a sugar candy. If it was camphor, it would just flare up. So the quality of the person is known in the same way. If it's the slightest provocation, if he gets into temper and gets annoyed, then his quality is not very good as a guru. As a guru, we should not flare up. We should not get angry. We should not try to oppress others. But what can we do then, people will ask. We have another method, what we call is love. Love. Instead of getting angry, if you show love and compassion to that person. So what happens? That it doesn't give you any anger, and the another person you don't make him angry also. If anger begets anger. If you get angry with somebody, that person may not ret retort because he is afraid of you, maybe that, but in his heart he will keep a revenge in his mind that one day I will show him why should he get angry with me. So in Sahaja Yoga, please remember that love is the only way we can solve the problem. Now if something goes wrong, say in the ashram, if you get angry with that person, what will happen? That person will bear a grudge against you. Perhaps if he's a good Sahaja Yogi, he may realize that it was a wrong thing to do. But if he's a bad Sahaja Yogi, not yet, fully equipped to understand, then what he will do? He will just feel that this man has insulted me, he has deliberately put me down and all that, and I should try to take a revenge. 
among animals, this uh, activity is very limited. I don't think they believe in revenge, except for few animals they say that if you hurt a snake, it will take its respite, it will come back on you. That's what he said. And uh, this one is something, one quality of the snake. But as we have passed through all these different categories, we might be having some of the qualities of some of these animals within us. We may be even snakes anyway. If the snake is within us, then anybody who hurts you, you will remember it all your life. He has hurt me, so I'll put him right one day, I'll take a revenge. If there's a snake within us, but now if there's a tiger within you, so you'll become very ferocious, at the smallest thing you'll get angry, lose temper. Now, this is not a very uh, good situation that we are still at the level of animals and our inheritance is still working in us. So we have to keep a watch. We have to be good gurus and for good guru, you have to have a very peaceful, compassionate, loving temperament. After all, One has to understand that people have this inheritance and some people have more, some people have this or some people have that. For that, if you get angry with that person, it's not going to help him or help you, but if you are loving and compassionate and you explain that person, what is the problem is and what you want to do, I tell you it will improve, he'll definitely improve and he'll feel your love. Of course sometimes, sometimes it's necessary to also forgive such a person. Such a person is to be forgiven, absolutely. In that doesn't mean that if he has done wrongs, all kinds of wrongs, you forgive him and he goes on still with the same, doesn't mean. Forgiven mean forgotten. Such and such person has been misbehaving, so just forget, forget it, completely forget it. For a guru it is important, for a Sahaja Yogi guru. I must say other gurus were not like that. They were absolutely, I would say, extremely hot-tempered and they used to lose temper on people. Once I met a guru and uh, he told me, Mother, you are too kind to them and with this kindness you cannot create good people. I've had enough of it, he said. I had made two people into gurus and one of them got lost in the money. All right, what happened to the second? And se second one got lost in the women. So I said, now it's all right. If they're lost, they're lost. But if you can revive them with your love, affection and kindness, better get around them. So <coughs> the one who was lost, I think if you open that door, People sitting outside can also hear me. So who are those sitting outside? No? <laughs> Open it fully. Of course.
Let them uh, move this side. Now it's better. So, as a guru, you must conclude that they are still lingering with their inheritance. But the second problem is much worse, because human beings can think. Of course, animals also think, but it is always conditioning. Whatever conditioning they have, accordingly they behave. But they don't have ego, that kind as human beings have developed. So the gurus develop also a very bad ego. First ego is, other gurus I have seen, they told me that we have done so much, we have worked so hard to achieve this state and why should we give realizations to others? Or if they have got realization, then, what have they done? Why should they get realization? It's become a comparison between their own state and how they have achieved it and how others have to achieve it. So they make all kinds of different torturing, troubling, maneuvers. For example, they may make the disciple stand on his head, give his family up, do this, do that. They'll beat the, they can beat also. They will make him uh, stay in the water for a long time, make him stand on the, on one feet. Like this they punish and the <coughs> worse come to worse, they may beat with sticks or with stones. They're like that. They don't want to talk. They don't want to understand what the another person has to say or the ones who are seekers, how they should be treated. All this anger and all these things might have been all right before, but after the advent of Sahaja Yoga, you must know it is not necessary. It is not at all necessary to give any physical punishment to your disciple. Now, also the mental punishment to your disciple should not be given. Like, people start saying all kinds of things to their disciple. Like saying, like I'm saying, say there's a leader, and the leader finds something wrong with the disciple, then he goes on saying, now you are like this, your father was like this, your grandfather was like this, your great-grandfather was like this, and you are also like this. Or some sort of thing that will hurt him. By hurting a person, you are not going to help. Supposing while walking you are hurt, you can't walk. In your spiritual ascent also, if you are hurt, you cannot go ahead. So not to hurt people is very important. Once you go on hurting others, then you are not a good guru. You are not the one who is really being kind, an understanding of the disciple. In Sahaja Yoga it's a different thing altogether, because you all have achieved Sahaja Yoga without doing any kind of penance, any kind of uh, guilty consciousness, confessions, anything, nothing. As you are, you got your realization. 
Nobody had to stand on their head, give up their husbands, wives, their families, this thing, nothing of the kind. As you are, whatever dress you are wearing, whatever conditions you are, you are given realization. Is a fact. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to exert yourself, don't have to do anything. Just you get it sitting down wherever you are. After that, this kind of a happening should prove to you that you have a power of love, of compassion. Out of your love you have given realization. We never realize that. Supposing we are anxious to give realization to people, we want to go to the villages, work there and give them realization. Why? Why do we do it? It is not for any fame, not for any reward or anything, but just out of the love that is in your heart, that you feel, why am I enjoying everything, why others are not enjoying? And so you go out of the way to help people, to get their realization. Now you have become a greater human being and you feel concerned. Others are getting ruined, they are going on a wrong path, they are doing wrong things and that makes you feel very, very upset and you want to help them. And this understanding once you have, then you will know how to deal with the person with whom you have to behave like a guru. Mostly it is not necessary to say anything harsh to that person. At the most you can tell the mistakes that they are committing. But that too in a, such a soft manner that a person doesn't get any shock out of that. All these thing of attachments also. Now somebody has too much attachment, say, for the family, for the wife, for the husband, children or something. And once they come to Sergio, still they have same amount of attachment. All right, doesn't matter. But how far they will go with that attachment? How long it will continue is the point. You should be detached. If I say, you cannot be. It's a state. It's a state of mind when you are detached. But when it comes to doing something for them, you will go all out to help them. But you are not an attached person. Now, what is the uh, description of an attached person? Attached person is always worried about the other person, goes on thinking about the other person. Cannot think of Sahaja Yoga, only think of the people with whom he is attached. Then he is very sensitive, you can't say anything to his brother, sister or anyone, otherwise he jumps. Attachment is also with the name that he has. Supposing he has achieved a certain name, Suppose, or some big position, then what does he do? You can't challenge him anyway. You cannot, by any words, you can challenge him. Because he's so identified with that. He thinks he's a big a person who has achieved such a lot of positions in life. He's so much attached that he wants. Uh, wants you, the guru to pay respect to that attachment. Now which is the way you can <coughs> solve that problem? Supposing somebody is very much attached to his wife, say for example, then you should not 
discuss and argue with that person, not at all. Because he's still coming up slowly, slowly up to this stage. Such a person is not absolutely a perfect Sajogya. So what do you have to do? If he's attached to his wife, let it be. But the Divine will work it out and he will realize that what he has been thinking, doing and taking decisions is all wrong. And once he discovered it himself, then he will get detached. But if you go on telling him anything and try to argue it out, it will never work out. So you must understand that as human beings, whatever we were, also as surge yogis, we have problems. And these should be slowly, slowly should be dissolved, not by argument, not by saying things, but by love and compassion. If you have love for a person, you will be amazed, 99% people value love. This is the third quality of human beings, I should say. First is his inheritance, second is he thinks, and thirdly that he values love. Anybody who loves, the another person values that love. Because he thinks that this particular person is loving me, not my wealth, not my beauty, not my this thing, but he's loving me. And this idea of love, this is something that will get him completely detached from that person easily. How? It looks very funny that <coughs> if you like somebody, if you love somebody, and then you should get detached. It's only possible in Sahaja Yoga. In Sahaja Yoga, your state of mind is such that you are absolutely detached and absolutely attached. Now, for example, <coughs> now, say I have my daughter, so I'm detached. I never telephone to her, I'm never bothered about her, because in Sahaja Yoga, you know how is that person. If the vibrations are right, why should you telephone? Why should you talk to her? Why should you ask for anything? No need. Only on vibrations you'll know how the person is. And so it will seem that you are absolutely detached. But when you will find the vibrations are showing or are indicating something serious about that person, what you will do, will put full attention to that. Full attention. You put attention, but not attachment. So the attachment doesn't solve the problem. What solves the problem is attention. But when you are not detached, then your attention is attached attention. It's an attention that is not available to everyone an attention that gets stuck, absolutely stuck into uh, that person with whom you are identified. We can sit in silent meditation.
we can slowly open our eyes and recite the morning prayer. May I this day do what you'd have me do. May I this day say what you'd have me say. May I this day be part and parcel of the whole. And may my thoughts be of the dear life soul. May I this day have love for all mankind. Shri Mataji, please be in my heart and in my mind. Shri Shri Mataji. We can all humbly bow down, raise our kundalinis and take a bandana.